Hi, it's Ryan the House, and welcome to part two of my rising damp myth video. In this video, I'm going to focus more on the solutions to fix the damp. The things you're going to need to carry out this project are a good cup of tea and a good pair of Umbro slacks. Right, here's a trench I dug in the first video, and hopefully, in this video, it's a lot clearer for you to see. It's what I'm showing here is where it's previously had an injection damp proof course. As you can see, where I've lowered the path, this has now dried out way below this, demonstrating how this does nothing whatsoever, but lowering this path does. And it's what you've got here is a damp line of where water is now bouncing up from here onto there. And what you can see here, here and here is where I've taken the plugs out and I've filled all the other holes. So I've still got that to do by here. I did this using a hydraulic lime mortar the parts two sand to one hydraulic lime mix. Now the plan with this trench is to dig it down a little bit deeper. I'm going to put a perforated uh, trench type drain along here and that is then going to go off in that direction into my foul sewer which I'll show you now. I'll then backfill this with gravel and then any residue of water that collects in this channel will make its way down to the foul drain. My path is currently sloping in this direction anyway, so the majority of surface water flows this way. So in here, I'm going to connect the channel drain, and that will also flow down into the foul sewer. And both will go into a pea trap prior to going into the foul sewer to avoid any bad smells coming back up the pipes. So here's the trench I dug in order to find the foul sewer. And if you look, there it is. It's an old clay pipe. So what I intend to do is break into the top of this using some new plastic connections that I've bought and I'll show you that in a minute. I just want to show you something from my first video. Where we left last time in the video I was breaking up this path here. The old path was at this height here with floor level going all the way across. I've managed to successfully remove all this path and you can look at the previous video if you want to make a comparison. I then lowers the manhole, I've still got a cement around this, fill it all back in, but this whole path has been lowered, and if you come here you can see where that's lighter, that's the height of the old path, and it used to slope down that way. I've then created my own channel in the concrete for now, so any water that collects here runs down into that drain. In time, I intend to put a channel along this side of the house, I'll then run a French drain along here and into this drain which connects into that foul sewer which runs under the ground into the one I just showed you. Something else I want to show you is as you can see I've hacked off all the render. Now this is because my render was blown. And unfortunately when the render was blown there were small cracks, moisture was getting behind the render and these bricks were soaking wet and it wasn't allowing these bricks to dry back out again. A bit like if you put a sheet over wet washing you'd never get it dry again. And since I've done this, this is now bone dry, lovely. The other thing I noticed when I took the render off, and I was getting a lot of damp behind the wall here. This was all empty, and there was no mortar in this joint whatsoever. And this went all the way up to the top of this render. So I filled that back with a two to one mix of two sand to one hydraulic lime. That makes it more breathable than cement render and allows the wall to dry out if it does get wet. And I had to fill all these up. And that has also helped, because water was getting behind here, making its way into these gaps. It was obviously trickling down and eventually working its way through the wall, because it's a solid wall. One thing to note here is my bricks are a bit of a mess. So what do you do afterwards? Well, to be honest with you, you could either re-render it with a nice breathable lime mortar. Um, option two, you could leave it, which looks messy, but it allows the bricks to dry out. Or your third option is to clad it. And I think that's going to be my option. And I think I'm going to use a large clad, but that's for another video. Whilst people discuss rising damp and how water rises up the bricks, my personal view is that it doesn't really exist. And all this is as a result of splashback and penetrating damp through the wall. This wall is in the direction of the prevailing rain. So whenever the rain comes in, it smacks this wall constantly. The other side of my house is fine. These vents here, there's something I've added. I've drilled straight through the wall, 
and that's allowed a little bit of ventilation behind my wall to allow circulation behind my kitchen unit on the other side. Otherwise when you were getting slight damp, the wall was cold, any moisture in there was condensing on the wall and so you had a combination of penetrating damp and condensation. I've dug all this down nice and neat now to the right level. I just want to show you this quadrant section. And you can buy these for where you're making a connection and they come with solid blanking plates all the way round. Cut out the ones you want to remove and just cut round the groove using a Stanley blade. So you just get your male groove and put it inside the female groove. Like that. And it's that simple. And that's now connected. This is the same all the way down on these drains. You just connect one into the next. The only thing to bear in mind is if you need to cut any of the drains down to size, always remember to cut it the right way so you still leave the joint that you require. Because if you cut it in the middle and that's the end you needed to join, you've had it because there won't be any connecting point. So make sure that you cut the end you don't need to join to the other piece. So if you get your knife, you just want your blade along these grooves and cut out the sections you need to cut out. If you were laying this on a path with heavy foot traffic or on a driveway, then you'd have a proper sub-base with hard core and stone dust. Um, but here, for my purposes, I don't need that because this is never being walked on. So I'm literally going to compact the soil down and place my drainage on that. And this isn't best practice, but like I say, this is never being walked on. It's right by my woodshed, the paths come into here, so there's no need for that. But please bear in mind, if you're doing a proper footpath or a proper driveway, please put down the correct sub-base. Right, so I've cut my three sides out of my little quadrant box, so I'm going to go and connect that up to the drainage. And then my drainage will start in that centre point and work backwards this way and work out that way and then I'll have to cut the two ends down to size. Using just a standard wood saw, I'm going to cut through the plastic. So you have it, the plastic bit's cut down to size. I'm going to leave the metal grill to later and I'll cut that down to size when I'm finished using an angle grinder. And where you have the final outfall into your soil pipe, you've got this hole. Now they come with a piece of plastic in them and you need to cut this out. Now the easiest way to do this is with a hole saw. For this I'm going to use an 86mm hole saw. And that appears to be the perfect size to do this. That's more or less done the trick. I'll need to cut and file a few bits out and smooth it off. But there you have it. So once you've drilled your hole and your gutter in and you connect it up, you need to line your gully pot for your soil pipe directly underneath. And this drops inside that. You can apply a bit of sealant to that if you want to seal it up. And then using this universal joint, I'm manoeuvring that around. And I'm going to put a piece of pipe up inside this. That's going to go directly down here. So I need to mark roughly where I need to make my hole. I'm going to do that with a pencil. And once I've marked my circle, I need to start to grind it out with an angle grinder. <laughs> 